Aston Martin has been on an increasingly aggressive recruitment drive ever since Lawrence Stroll first took control of the team in 2018. But its latest signing, former McLaren team principal Martin Whitmarsh, is the biggest name to join. Whitmarsh will have a key role to play in the new role of Group Chief Executive Officer of Aston Martin Performance Technologies. We'll get into exactly what that snappy title means shortly. But by bringing in someone who was a central figure at McLaren for more than 100 race wins and a combined total of 10 drivers and constructors championships, this is another big statement of intent from one of F1's most ambitious teams. Let us know in the comments what you think of Aston Martin's latest recruit, and when you think it will be in a position to fight for world championships. So what exactly will Whitmarsh be doing as Group Chief Executive Officer of Aston Martin Performance Technologies? The first thing to make clear is that this is not another name for running the F1 team on a day-to-day -day basis, which remains the job of Team Principal Otmar Safnauer. Whitmarsh has a slightly different skill set, one that isn't rooted in being a traditional F1 team boss. The F1 team does come under Whitmarsh's oversight, but that is just part of the wider technology company that's being created. This means he will be focusing on the wider strategy and operation of Aston Martin Performance Technologies. To use a religious metaphor, he will be what you might call Lawrence Stroll's Vicar on Earth. Whitmarsh is uniquely suited to this task given the central role he played in McLaren Group, evolving from simply being a successful racing team into something far bigger that also included automotive and technology arms. For while Whitmarsh is best known for his stint as McLaren F1 team principal from 2009 to early 2014 before being ousted from the role by Ron Dennis, he spent a quarter of a century at McLaren. Whitmarsh first joined McLaren as Operations Director in 1989. He came from an engineering background, albeit not one in motorsport, and previously worked for British Aerospace. He soon became a key lieutenant of Dennis, and in 1997 was appointed Managing Director with oversight of the racing team, and then Chief Operating Officer of the McLaren Group seven years later. Even before he became McLaren team principal in 2009, succeeding Dennis, he had played a massive role in making modern McLaren. This included introducing the latest structures needed for such a broad company, and while the matrix management system he imported from the aerospace industry is much maligned given the struggles the team had technically in later years, such innovations were key in McLaren establishing itself as the most far-sighted and rapidly evolving of all F1 teams in the late 20th and early 21st century. He spent the last seven years outside of Formula One, but still kept his toe in the water with some consultancy work, alongside high-profile roles such as being CEO of the INEOS America's Cup sailing team, so he's perfectly qualified to be Stroll's man on the ground. At McLaren, he was closely aligned with the late Mansour OJ, who is known to have been less than impressed when Dennis forced Whitmarsh out in 2014. But integrating different business units and ensuring good communication and strategic direction is very much in his wheelhouse, as indeed is playing the political games in F1, where Aston Martin has perhaps been a little weak in recent years. Whitmarsh is, after all, a former chairman of the Formula One Teams Association. Aston Martin is having a trying season. As the team's senior management points out at every opportunity, the small but significant aerodynamic regulation changes for 2021 hit its low-rate car concept, copied, of course, from Mercedes in 2020, and left it with only the seventh fastest car this year. But off-track, it's making huge strides. Next year's major overhaul of the technical regulations means 2022 should be more competitive, but there's far more to come in the long term. Whitmarsh isn't the only significant signing that has been made to bolster the team. Andrew Green heads up the technical side having been promoted to Chief Technical Officer, but the personnel and financial resources available to him have grown dramatically. Ex Alfa Romeo Chief Designer Luca Fabato will join the team before the start of the 2022 season as Engineering Director, with Red Bull Head of Aero Dan Fallows due to join at some point in the future. These are just two of the names who have signed up to fill roles at the top of the technical structure, with the existing personnel bolstered by numerous new arrivals among the rank and file. But the most obvious spending is the $150 to $200 million being sunk into building the team's new factory, or as it's more properly described, campus. 
Earlier this month, a ceremonial groundbreaking marked the start of work on construction of two buildings at the team's expanded Silverstone headquarters. The main building is set to take 18 months to complete and will house the majority of departments, including the design office. The second building will hold its new cutting-edge wind tunnel. Originally, the wind tunnel wasn't part of the plan, but despite ongoing discussions that could possibly lead to their use being banned in the future, the medium-term benefits have led to significant cash being spent on a tool that is not going to be fully operational until 2024. The wind tunnel will feature a steel belt rolling road system and state-of-the-art flow imaging section area and is expected to significantly increase the team's rate of aerodynamic development. The existing main building, which houses much of the team, many of the others being in temporary offices, will be replaced down the line, with one housing an auditorium, wellness centre, the driver and loop simulator and heritage department. This is all part of turning a factory that has housed the team since Jordan moved into it ahead of the 1992 season, having initially been based in Unit 21 of the Silverstone Business Park into a state-of-the-art Aston Martin F1 campus. Inevitably, such major infrastructure projects means it will take time for the spending to pay off. This is why Stroll has set a timeline of up to five years for Aston Martin F1 to emerge as a title contending force. Whitmarsh will play a key part in marshalling these projects and ensuring that the team adds up to be the sum of its parts. The one obvious success story on track for Aston Martin in 2021 has been Sebastian Vettel. It recently confirmed Vettel will remain at the team alongside Lance Stroll in 2022. But although Vettel has only occasionally been able to take big results this year, he has made a key contribution to Aston Martin's evolution. And that influence stretches beyond simply being a marquee signing with a high profile. While Stroll has been the more consistent scorer, with seven points finishes in 14 races, Vettel has produced Aston Martin's big moments so far in 2021. Second place in Azerbaijan was Vettel's high point after a superb drive. He also finished second on the road at the Hungara Ring before being excluded for his car failing to provide the mandatory one litre fuel sample. An impressive fifth place at Monaco and another fifth in the farcical Belgian Grand Prix following a superb qualifying performance in the wet have been Vettel's other big results. And while there have been a few mishaps, notably rear-ending Esteban Ocon in Bahrain and spinning while battling with Fernando Alonso on the first lap of the British Grand Prix, Vettel has had a good season. Vettel has also gradually asserted himself over Stroll in terms of qualifying performances. Although Stroll was ahead in three of the first four events, Vettel has now turned that around and has outqualified his teammate nine times in 14 races. Vettel's strong work ethic and technical attention to detail has also been hugely valuable to Aston Martin. Vettel is famous for the length of his debriefs given the detail he goes into, and while that can occasionally lead to some very long sessions, he leaves no stone unturned. Given he spent a dozen years with two of F1's biggest teams, Red Bull and Ferrari, his knowledge of their rigour and working practices has been beneficial to Aston Martin. These skills are particularly valuable to Aston Martin given it's currently going through a process of expansion that aims to establish it among F1's big beasts. Vettel's knowledge of the aerodynamic development directions taken by Ferrari in recent years will have been immense value in where Aston Martin needs to raise its game in terms of design and development understanding. Vettel does not design the car, obviously, but he comes with knowledge that can help to lay bare Aston Martin's relative weaknesses. He's also a galvanising force, well liked in the team and with a stellar CV. In all of the guises this team has existed as, stretching back to its creation as Jordan in 1991, it has never had a multiple world champion on its books. In the past, other emerging teams have spoken of the value of having such an accomplished driver offering direction and feedback as they bid to become big names, with Michael Schumacher's contribution at Mercedes from 2010 to 2012 a recent example. Vettel is playing this role for Aston Martin. His profile also plays well commercially. While it is understood that the scale of such activities was up for discussion when Vettel's option was renewed, given the 34-year-old was keen to cut back on events away from the circuit, he's a star name who has been integral not only to the profile of the Formula 1 team, but also Aston Martin's road car division. Star power costs, but it also offers immense value. Whether Vettel will remain with Aston Martin for the four or five years it hopes it will take to emerge as a title-winning force remains to be seen. 
but whatever happens, he is playing a key role right now. Let us know in the comments what you think about Aston Martin's grand ambitions and the moves it has made so far. And if you enjoyed this look at the team's growth, make sure you like and subscribe.